then where is the chat? There. Uh, if you, I see the chat. Oh, you found it? Got it. Okay. Yeah, so if you're if you're ready, I'll go ahead and start the recording and <coughs> you can get started. Sure. Right. Good um, starting morning. In. Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing today? Wild day here in this market. Another wild day for the books here for 2020. So thanks so much for having me, David. And uh, good morning, everyone. I'm here in New York. It's a beautiful day, cold, but I'm going to talk today about how you can make money and earn a living trading stocks, specifically day trading stocks. And specifically, I'm going to talk about 20000 a month, but you can make way more than this. Obviously, it depends on how much you risk per trade. So every trade I take has a stop. That's a day trade. And if I do an option trade, I have a set risk. I don't kill my trades arbitrarily. So whatever risk I put on, I let every trade play out. Okay, so know that. Um, and we're going to talk about some options trades today. And we're going to talk about some day trades as well. One thing I want to say, <laughs> excuse me, before I before I continue the lecture today is that um, today's trade of the day, which I didn't have time to stick in the webinar, um, was Boeing. Okay, we shorted Boeing today and I actually called puts in Boeing yesterday and the stock gap down today and it had a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful move. So um, Boeing still looks lower to me. I thought Boeing was lower in December of 2019. And, uh, and I was right, and that stock is collapsing, okay? So uh, there's a little stock tip of the day. Boeing is a nice short, okay? So let's get started here. So the question is, can you make real money in the market? 20000 a month, 20000 a trade. Some people aren't even making 20000 a year, which they'd love to be making because some people are losing in the market. The answer is yes, you can make real money in the market, but you have to have a strategy and you have to have a specific thing that you're looking for. And not only that, you can't deviate from it. You can't, you have to hold the conviction. I was talking about this in the trading room this morning. If you have a bias, you hold it, you hold the conviction. Boeing is a good example. I held the conviction in that, knew it was lower, okay? Sometimes I'm early when I do my trades. I'd rather be early than late. So. Long story short is you can make real money in this market. The only thing that's stopping you is you. As you make money over time, even if it's $100, $200 a day though, your confidence builds. And as you do that, you also get better and better and better in the strategy. I find that a lot of people don't have a set strategy that they have confidence in. And a lot of people also change their mind willy-nilly about what they're doing all the time. But you can make real money in the market. You have to be serious about doing it. And if you're doing it consistently, that's where you're going to see the bucks. That's where you're going to make the money. There are billions and billions and billions of dollars in the market. Okay, we always hear about people making fortunes in the market. How do they do it? If they're not one-shot wonders, okay? They have a strategy that they consistently follow that works that they don't deviate from. Well, it's great to have one big trade sometimes that falls out of the sky. For me personally, it's focusing on the system and replicating it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And every once in a while then, a big one just falls in your lap, okay? But it's over the course of time, over the course of years, okay, that you can make a lot of money. So the key to today's trading stocks successfully really is to trade a system that is reliable. And not only that, that makes sense. So I'm looking for institutional buying and institutional selling. And that's what you're seeing in Boeing today. You're seeing institutional selling. I happen to see it a long time ago, okay? But it's institutional selling. If you can learn how to spot institutional buying and selling, guess what? You can make money in the market as an individual, as a trader with a small account or a medium account or a big account, okay? Doesn't matter. And I can see everyone's questions. If you have questions as we go along here, just let me know. But success or failure of you, your personal trading journey has a lot to do with the quality of your system because no matter how good your money management is, you will fail and lose if you do not have a good system. If you go long a stock that is falling, you're going to lose. It doesn't matter how good your money management is and vice versa. For in other words, if you were long Boeing today, you would be down, you would be losing. You wouldn't want to be long that stock today, okay? 
So the quality of your system has a lot to do with your success or failure. And sometimes, and I've talked to a lot of people since I've owned the stock swoosh for the last eight years, people blame themselves and their own lack of money management for their own losses or failure. While it's true you do need to have money management, that's just like trading 101. You still aren't gonna make it or make money if you don't have a good system. So stop beating yourself up. If you've been beating yourself up about your losses, maybe it really isn't you. Maybe it has nothing to do at all with you. It has to do with the system that you're using. Or if you don't even have one, that would be problem number one. Okay, so what kind of system makes sense? Again, to me, it's looking at the institutional moves. It's, it's control, okay? To me, what makes sense is a system that looks for who's in control. It's, it's the consistency is go, always going for the control side of it. For me, I tell that in the gaps. I look at gaps, okay? And you need a system that offers a consistency so that you can trade every week, every month, every year, no matter if the market is bullish or bearish, okay? Right now, the market is bullish. We're still in an uptrend. It remains to be seen if we will break that trend or not this year, 2020. I don't know, okay? I am watching it, but I look for gaps, and I'm gonna go over in a chart here what a gap is in a minute if you don't know, but very quickly, I'll tell you, a gap is a difference between the close and the open. Gaps tell you where the big money, where the institutional money is going to go, and then you look and you trade it once you read it and see it for consistent profits. And the main reason why traders really, I feel, are all over the place for the results is that they lack this consistency in a strategy. You cannot go long and short the same stock in one day and say, well, I have conviction. That makes no sense. Conviction is conviction. Either the stock is lower or it's higher. You can't believe it's both, okay? You're not gonna uh, make money doing that consistently or any large amounts of money. And that's what obviously everyone's goal should be is profit, money, being successful, okay? But there's only ever one person, one control in any given charge at any given day. It's either the bulls or the bears, okay? And you have to find the control, spot the control, and go with the control. So for me, I look at the gap, and I get up in the morning and I rate the gap, and that's how I determine the control. My system is called the Golden Gap System. It's a rating system. It's a 26-point checklist that tells me who is in control. So I saw very early on who was in control of Boeing. It was the bears. Maybe certain days you may have thought that the bulls were in control, but they weren't. The bears were really in control, okay? And you see, today I think it's very easy for people to see that point at the chart, but I saw it before the sell-off today. It's had other sell-off days, though. Uh, your strategy needs a big account. Is that right? No, I didn't say that. When did I say that? You don't need a big account. You can risk $100 per trade and trade my system. Your account size should be go with your risk. If you have $5,000 in a proprietary day trading account, you can't risk $5,000 in one trade. That would be crazy. You should risk about $200, $250 per trade. Okay? So your risk has to do with the size of your account. You do not need a big account to trade my system. And in fact, if you do options, you don't even need a margin account to trade my systems. You could have a regular cash account, but again, your risk per trade has to do with how much cash you have in the account. If you have an options account with two grand, you can trade my system, but you can't risk $2,000, which is your entire account in one trade. Okay, Alan? But I never said you need a big account. And you don't even need a big account to make 20 grand a month. Your average risk per trade, if you want to earn 20 grand a month, would probably should be around 1,000, 1,500 per trade, per trade, okay? Do you understand what I mean when I say that? That means if the trade stops out, how much would you lose if you risk 1,500, $1,500? But you don't need a big account. I'm not sure what you mean by big, but I'm guessing 50 grand minimum. But no, you do not need that. Now, if you're talking about retail firms and margin, if you want to open up an account at a retail brokerage firm, you need 25000 minimum and your margin is 4 to 1. If you open up a prop account, you can open up a prop account with as little as $2,500 and your margin will be 10 to 1. And you'll have 25000 in margin to short stocks or buy stocks as a day trade. But again, that's not a big account to me. Um, there is no such thing as a hybrid bull or bear in my mind, in my stock swish world. 
I think like someone that would be managing a fund. Actually, I've done that with these calls I've made this year so expertly. This has been a big start to the year for 2020. I'm really in the zone right now of looking at things as if I was managing a lot of money and as if I was managing money as a fund, which if I have time, I'll talk about that at the end in reference to the market. But you don't see hedge funds going long and shorting a stock the same day. No, you don't. So in my mind, that type of thing doesn't exist. Theoretically, could you go long into a rally on short covering and Boeing today and make some money? Yes. Would you do that with 100,000 shares? No. So why would you do it with 1,000? That's dumb. If the momentum is to the downside in Boeing, then you're looking for a short setup when it sets up. That's what you should be doing. And again, whether you have a small account or a big account, if you trade with a small account as if you had a lot of money, eventually you will. If you trade with a small account like you don't give a crap and you're scalping for five cents here in both directions, that's all you're going to do. And ultimately, you're just paying commissions. If you're at a place that still charges commissions and you're just racking up losses, you'll never get the big move. You'll never get the momentum. The momentum in Boeing today, we shorted it around 274. The stock dropped down to 268. That's momentum, a $6 move, okay? Um, you think my training fee is expensive? It's not. Alan's already on to my cost of my class at $69.99 at seven grand. If you can learn something that's gonna teach you how to trade for the rest of your life, to be honest with you, Alan, it's cheap. So, and the cost of my class, if you've been following me, has increased every year, and there's a reason for that. People are making a lot of money with me, so. I have to disagree with you about that. And someday I won't teach the class. So I would take advantage of it when you can, while you can. The idea of me running the hedge fund and starting a hedge fund is not out of the woods. I just <laughs> want to let you know that. Although I love, love what I do. Um, I absolutely, absolutely love what I do. You know, when I call stocks like Boeing and the market the way that I've been calling it too, I say to myself, gosh, you know, um, I should be making billions. <laughs> so that's pretty much where I'm at with it. Um, and as far as you personally, if you are committed to trading, you will pay the cost of my class. If you're not committed, you won't. And if you don't have the money, then my suggestion to you is save. A lot of people do cheap class, cheap class, cheap class, cheap class, and they lose money in the market over the cost of years. And I'm talking about people just in general, not just my class, other classes. You get what you pay for, that's what I say. And you have to be invested in this and committed to do it if you want to do it. When people come to me and they pay the money for my class, they're committed to learning it. And that's the kind of people that I want to spend my time with. My time is very valuable. I want to take my time. My time is valuable. I'm spending my time with you here today. I'm answering your questions. Take advantage of it. Ask me questions that you want to know or charts that you want me to know what I think about. Don't lose this time with me. My knowledge and skill set is valuable and it's worth something. You're lucky that you're here with me today. You understand? Okay, getting back to what I'm saying. Let's talk about having a niche. So for me, the niche is the gap. So gaps are created with large institutional money. That's what makes the gap. It creates it. It fuels it like a fire, like you're burning a fire, okay? The professional gaps that happen in plan and stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and then confirm that the large money will flow with it. By having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on your side. When you have institutional money on your side, you don't have to think that hard. You don't have to do anything. You don't even need to take 5,000 shares of something. You, like I said, you could, take a, could have taken 1,000 shares of Boeing today and made six grand in the call I gave. So, I mean, institutional money is what makes these big flushes. I call it a flush. I call it a move, okay? You have to spot it. You have to get it at the right time. Which, which, which is what I focus on in the morning, and then you play it, and then you act, and you're ready, okay? And I prep in the morning in the pre-market, and also in the post-market. To be honest with you, I've been, I've been looking at the market at night, uh, till late, late at night, and also sending out some videos to my subscribers in the last week, ever since Monday a week ago through last night. I've been watching the market late. That's been telling me a lot about what's gonna happen, what's coming up, what's gonna happen the next day and what is coming up like I'm talking about today, tomorrow, next week. I can see that, I can tell that. Because we're in, a, we're in a volatile period right now. Don't think that it hasn't ended, it is just begun. So gaps are an event and they create a sense of urgency, like panic, like we saw the market sell off last week. 
When people are down, they panic and they sell. That's what created the solve that we had Thursday last week, for example, and then the gap down Friday morning. And so an action is forced by participants of the stock. And this is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. Trading golden gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading the side of power money. Because you don't have millions and millions and millions of dollars, probably. I mean, you might if you're here listening to me. You might have millions of dollars. And if you do, good for you. You still need one to invest it and trade it correctly, okay? So if you don't, though, you have to trade with that money because that's the money that moves stocks. That's the money that moves the market. So predicting events beforehand and in the moment for profit is key. So here's Boeing. So let's just go over this right in here. So anyways, I knew this was going to fall today. So I called puts in this yesterday. But again, I've caught a lot of puts in this in the, in the last year. We shorted this many, many times. But anyways, long story short, this was a nice short today. Stock closed here last night. Boom. Gap down here this morning. Fell. Fell. Broke this area over here. And again, this just looks like it's going to die. <laughs> the best way that I can describe it. It did die. It is dying. It's the death could continue continue. Um, and this I felt like this uh, back in December 2019. Um, in here, even before the Coronavirus hit everybody and then we did sell off here. This is into the Christmas holiday. Oh, no, this was January. This was December. I thought we were lower. Then we sold off into here into January. Then we rallied. And again, we didn't go long this ever in here, and then we dropped off here. This is late February, and then we fell. And this was with the market and everything else. Um, where else am I saying? Right now, I use Hotcom, yes. I've been with them for a million years, Alan. Anyways, let's talk about a short squeeze. What is a short squeeze? A situation in which a heavily shorted stock or commodity moves sharply higher, forcing more short sellers to close out their short positions and then adding to the upward pressure on the stock. A short squeeze implies that short sellers are being squeezed out of their short positions, usually at a loss, okay? A short squeeze is generally triggered by a positive development that suggests the stock may be embarking on a turnaround. Although the turnaround in the stock's fortunes may only prove to be temporary, few short sellers can afford to risk runaway losses in their short positions and may prefer to close them out even if it means taking a substantial loss. So you saw this at various different times with the market in the last couple of months. Again, this is something else that I like to look at too. But I got to be honest with you. As far as going long and short, which I can do, I prefer to short. I prefer to short more than anything else, okay, like this Boeing chart right here. I love shorting. Now, can you guess why? Because selling happens fast. Selling happens quick. And if someone said to you, would you rather make money fast or would you rather make money in a couple of days, you'd say, no, I'd rather make money right now today. I'd rather make money today by 4 o'clock. I'd rather make money in 30 minutes rather than wait until Friday. That's what you would say. Anybody would. So the reason I like shorting so much is because selling happens quick. Panic happens fast. Now, again, I do go long. I'm very, very picky about my longs, but I do prefer to short, whether it's for options trains, which I would call puts, or whether it's for day trains, which we just short, like the Boeing, okay? So anyways, you have to look what's happening in the daily chart. I look at the daily chart, and that's how I determine the direction of the gap. And I look at it, and I say, okay, how is this setting up? Where is the big money going here? And a lot of people buy support and short resistance as a strategy. While sometimes that works, that does not work consistently as a way to make money in the market, okay? If it were that easy, everyone would always buy the 200 per moving average or the 50 per moving average in any chart that was in an uptrend, okay? It's not that easy. It's not that simple to see it, okay? It's the gap. It's always the gap. Um... Is there a gap every day? For the most part, we're getting into the end of first quarter earnings season now. The earnings are sporadic. Costco is tonight. I'll be watching that. I don't know what it does. I'm not calling any trades in until I see what it does. It's probably going to gap. I don't know if I'm going to play it. I don't know which way it's going to gap. I haven't rated it. I can't. The stock didn't report, but it will tonight at 5 o'clock. But anyways, in non-earning season in between, there are going to be some days, once earning season stops before the second quarter, 
then there are times where we may have days where there are no gaps meet my criteria. And I will look more for longs than shorts on those days when we're in between the periods. During first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter earnings, which is four earnings seasons a year, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of stocks that are gapping. So it's, it's very easy to find things to do or a lot of things to do. For me personally though, earnings season does have the best moves and the biggest moves, so we focus on those. But I will do things in not earnings season. I will do non-earnings gaps. And if there's nothing on a Monday, which is typically the slowest day in the market, that's okay. You, I mean, if there's nothing one day, then that's not the end of the world. Your idea is to trade quality, not just to trade for the sake of trading. Uh, what about the SPY? My bias on the market is that we're going to sell off. That's my bias on the market. I didn't do any day trades in the market today, but my bias on the market here is that we're going to have a drop coming up. If you want to know, if we have time, I'll talk about that at the end here. Just remind me. Anyways, let's make good choices when we trade. You work hard for your money, so you want quality trades. This is the exact point of what I was talking about, about not going long and short the same stock. And so having good choices, part of it is for me the prep work in the morning, okay? I get up, I get ready in the morning, and I figure out what I'm going to do. And that's that. Uh, someone's saying I'm very young. I thank you. I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> I, I've still been doing this for 12 years. So, I, you know, it's a long time to do one thing. <laughs> Anyways, the system I have tells you how, what, and when. How do you make money in the market? You trade a strategy and system that's profitable. For me, it's golden gaps. It's a highly profitable strategy because they focus on large momentum moves to trade. What stocks should you trade? For me, it's stocks that gap. They have to rate 20 points or more per my 26 point system. So they don't have to get a perfect score. 20 is the cutoff. 17, 18, 19 is 50, 50 chance of losing or failing and or working. So I tend to only do them 20 or more. And anything under 17, you shouldn't do. I always trade the gap in the direction of the gap, okay? So when do you trade them? Early in the morning, into the open, when they set up and trigger in the first 30 minutes of the day. So that's when I'm looking for the setups. If I don't get a setup in the first 30 minutes, then I don't do anything, okay? But anyways, this kind of trading is highly, highly lucrative. Can it be duplicated over and over? The answer is yes, all right? And so you're looking for it. Here was Google. We're going to go over a couple gaps in Google. What is a gap? Again, I was talking about this earlier. The gap is the difference between the close and the open. This is Google. This is a daily chart. This is back in the middle of February. Stock closed here, 1480, gap down. Open down here, ran 1420. Stock closed here, gap down. This was last week, okay, when we started out the week, I think it was. Then it gapped up. Closed here, gapped up, opened at a higher price. So closed here, opened at a higher price, fell. Then it closed here, then it gapped up at a higher price, rallied, dropped, fell, closed neutral. Then it closed here, then it gapped down. This was Thursday last week, then it sold off, okay? Then it closed here, this is Thursday, then it gapped down on Friday morning, then it rallied all the way up. And this was Friday into the close of the weekend. Then it closed here, then it opened at a higher price on Monday, then we rallied. Again, this is Google. Then we closed here, then we gapped up. This is Tuesday, fell hard on Tuesday. Couldn't hold the gap up Tuesday. Closed here, gapped up Wednesday, rallied. Then we were selling off. I was telling you, don't look at stuff at night. We were selling off really hard last night, like way late, past six o'clock. And then we gapped down this morning, okay? And I clipped this like at 10.15. So anyways, long story short, I just went over all the gaps that happened here in Google. There were gap ups, there were gap downs, okay? So let's talk about some options trades that I called. Sometimes, I'm very good at reading market direction, I will call a wave of trades on the same day. Again, when someone was asking about the size of your account, if I call 10 trades in one day and you can't do them all, then you do one, then you do two. You do what you can afford, okay? Um, someone's talking to asking me about investing. My class is $69.99. It's seven grand. You have to pay for the class on a credit card. As far as opening up an account, you can open up an options account 
And you can trade my system using options. We're gonna go over this Amazon option here, or you can day trade it. You can day trade options, or you can do equity trades on margin. You have to call a broker to set up an account. I'm not a broker. I would contact your broker to find out how much money you need to set up a margin account if you wanna do options or if you wanna day trade, okay? But your risk per trade has to do with your cash, not your margin. So for example, say someone gives you $100,000 in margin at a prop place or a retail place, your risk per trade still has to do with the cash that you're risking, okay? Does this make sense? All right, let's get back into the ones that I called here from last Thursday. So I called the Amazon puts because I saw the market was going to fall, okay, Thursday into Friday. So I called the Amazon puts. This was kind of late in the day, 145. I called the 1925s and this fell and got down Friday morning. These were expensive. One of these cost 5,000 in Amazon, okay? Two contracts cost 10,000. This It ran well over 100, 110 and the profit was $12,000. Very nice trade. On options trades, I'm looking for anywhere from 50 to 100% return on investment. In this case here, this was more than that. Why? Because I called the trade late in the day and then it just gapped down. So the stock gapped down through the number. So in this case here, you take it on a Thursday, hold it overnight into Friday morning, you get up in the morning and you're up. I love those trades. Those are great, great trades, okay? For a $5,000 account, can you still make $20,000 monthly? Well, let's see, Alan. I answered that question earlier. In order to make twenty dollars you're going to have to risk approximately $1,000 per trade. So do I think you should risk $1,000 per trade cash risk if your account has $5,000 in it? No. You'd be risking 25% of your account in one trade. So the answer, the answer or 20% 20, 20 of your account, I'm sorry, in one trade. So the answer is no, you cannot make $20,000 a month with five grand. What would be a normal risk? Like I said, $250, okay? Well, can you eventually make 20,000 a month and grow that $5,000 account up to 10,000? That 10,000 account up to 20,000? A 20,000 account up to 40,000? Yes, if you don't take too much risk, like risking 20% of your account in one trade. Is that, is that understandable? If you have a sad amount of cash, you have to make that money work, okay? And you must figure, if I call 10 trades, eight of 10 trades are gonna work and two of 10 trades I call are gonna fail. So you need to account for that, which is the exact reason why I said you wouldn't risk all of your money in one trade. These are very common sense things. Very, very common sense things, okay? I just said that, Alan, it's about an 80% win ratio. Okay, let's talk about Boeing. This was last week, and actually you still could have been in this trade. I thought it made sense to get out of this because of the gap down here from Thursday to Friday. But if you held the Boeing puts that I called last Thursday through today, Boeing went to 268 and some change this morning. You could have taken this trade last Thursday at 11.30 Eastern time. I thought it was a good exit on Friday. Uh, you could have got out of it and sold it for 19, profit was $15,600, 217% return of investment, but the stock today went to 268 at the low. So you could have taken the trade last Thursday and held it for a week. Now, I typically like to take something and get the rollover and take it right away in 24 to 48 hours if it's going. But this right here is a good example, one that continued. You could have taken half of it out on Friday and you could have held part of it for the week. But I like, I've called so many trades that when you're up, some, especially something like this where you're up over 200%, I really think it's important to book the money, okay? This was a good one here. I called the Tesla puts at 10 o'clock last Thursday. I called the 700 puts. Again, this was out to this Friday, but again, beautiful move, cost of these. Tesla really, 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 really moves for those of you that have ever played this. Stock was cost 28 bucks for uh, one put. Three, risk was 8,400, sold at 92. This, had a, this is a big move. This might have even gone over 100 that day. I, I don't remember. But anyways, 19,200, again, return on investment, 229%. This is taking it Thursday, getting out on Friday. Taking it Thursday, getting out on Friday in the morning. Okay? So these are options trades. And the reason it makes sense to do these stocks I'm talking about, 
Tesla, Boeing, Amazon as options is because Tesla's $700 some dollars a share. Because these are expensive stocks to trade as equity trades. Now, Microsoft, you could have done either way as an equity trade last week, or you could have done it as a put. I called the puts in this, the 162.50 puts. I called this in the pre-market Thursday morning when I saw the market would collapse. And Microsoft did as well. This didn't collapse as, as much as some of those previous ones, but it was still a nice turnaround. 138% return investment. Cost was four bucks. One contract would have cost you 400. Is that something you can take with a $5,000 a $5, account? Alan, yes. And guess how much you would have made? You could have sold it for 950. So you would have made what? 550 bucks, risking 400, taking a trade on a Thursday and exiting on Friday. What's wrong with that? Nothing. Then all of a sudden your $5,000 account is 5550, okay? And that's how you grow a small account. Not by taking extreme risk and doing crazy, crazy things. You chunk it out. But you should do that with a big account too. With a big account, you should chunk it out. Apple was a good one. Apple, I called again, 8.14 in the morning in the pre-market. I rated the gap in Apple last Thursday and saw the market would drop and had 100% conviction that everything would drop with the market, which it did. Apple puts, I called the 270s. Again, they were out till this week, but it was last Thursday. They cost four bucks. You could have sold them for 16. Huge trade. Big move in Apple, a 300% return investment. Really, really nice run. Drop down on that. Again, you have to wait until the open to take these trains, but I see them very early in the morning. Okay, so why is my system really reliable and consistent? Because of the power of money. Because power of money in the market and in stocks is created by institutions. They set the tone for stocks move on the day and for the trend overall, long-term trend, okay? Daily trend, long-term trend. If you become a specialist in defining when institutions are buying or selling, then you will have a huge advantage in your trading as if you were running your own fund. Do you know what I'm saying? If you, you have to think like you have a lot of money. You can't think like you don't, okay? Make choices that are quality, quality choices. Quality choices. I find for some reason it's reverse. reverse. You would think that if someone didn't have a lot of money, they'd be extra careful. I find that in teaching people, it's a reverse. People that have a little bit of money are not careful. That makes no sense to me. Again, use common sense when you trade. Power money sets the trend, makes the trend, and changes the trend in charts. If you're not trading on the side of power money in the market, you're going to have a hard time seeing lasting and consistent profits and success in your trading. I have a friend. He, I'm not going to say what stock it is. He's long a stock. Stock's in a downtrend. He's in it overnight. He's in it as a swing trade. He's in it on margin. And I'm like, and he's up in it today. I said, get out. And he's like, no, it's going to boot, 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 boot. I said, whatever, he, he, I'm going to be right. He shouldn't be in the trade. He is up in the trade. He should take his money and run. He's in the wrong direction overall. But because he's up, he thinks it's going to keep going forever because it's in a downtrend and it's a long way to go up if it wants to go up. But the fact is that the control is not on the side of the bulls. The control is on the side of the bears. So long story short, many people trade on the wrong side of stuff. And you can make money trading on the wrong side of stuff, but not consistently. It's the consistency that's going to keep you in the game, number one. Keep your cash, grow your cash, and enable you to do this for a living if you want to, and take larger risk, okay? That's the only way you're going to get anywhere with it. And you'll, you'll be very, very discouraged if you lose over the course of months and weeks and years. And I've run into a lot of those people. I get it. But they're doing the wrong thing. So I can't feel sorry for people when they do the wrong things all the time. So you have to learn how to read and trade on the side of institutional money. Institutional money is in charge in the market and stocks at all time. And even if you think it's not, it is. Even if you think it's not, it is. Sometimes something can go the opposite direction of something. There were days that Boeing rallied, but the control was never had never flipped. <laughs> um, I know you have a lot of win trades. Da, 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 da. What makes me different from other, others? I only trade gaps. Many people that trade gaps don't trade them the way that I do because I created my own system and don't know how to trade gaps. Um, so that makes me different. I have a niche. Um, I'm sure there are other people that trade this market that find power money. I'm sure that there are. I never said that I was the only person that knew how to read power money, Alan. There are people out there that are making money in the market. You may know some of them. You may know none of them. I don't know. 
But as far as on a practical level, one of the reasons I'm successful on a practical, practical level, I read gaps and that directs me in a rating system that I personally created over the course of three years, 12 years ago. Um, and that tells me how to read the market, which is why I read the market so accurately, and stocks. So on a practical level, I have a system that you can come and learn from me that I've been doing for a long time. So I'm, I'm successful because on a practical level, I have a system that you can learn from me, okay? That's on a practical level. On a totally, totally non-practical level, I have a gift to read charts. I see things before a lot of other people do. Sometimes I cannot explain them. I do the best I can to explain them. I think the trades I've called this year from January through February in Tesla, which made everyone's year that took those trades. The Tesla trades I called this year made every single person's year on my options newsletter that did the trades. I have a gift and, 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 it, and it's been developed over time because I do nothing but this. That is on a non-practical level and that's not something that I can convey to you. So I have a skill set. Some people are good at playing an instrument. I'm good at reading price action, buying and selling. So it's a skill and that's on a non-practical level and that I can't impart to you. But on a practical level, you can take my class and learn it and join my group and get my calls and benefit from learning the practical and impractical things of being around me. And I think the more that people train with me, they their confidence grows as they make money and then they start to see things as well, the nuances that are in specific charts. Okay, like Boeing, for example. I knew that was still lower even when it had the rally earlier in the year, okay? And that will help you stay on the right side of trades when you gain confidence. Because sometimes you may take a trade and you may be down in the trade before it goes profitable in your direction. What you don't wanna do is kill it, flip it around, because it inevitably will go in the direction that I originally said. So that's why I'm talking about don't flip things. You have conviction in one direction or another. And that's, again, something that you can learn over time, which you gain through confidence. And there's nothing like growing your account, whether it's by $200 a day or $500 a day or $1,000 a day, your confidence grows as you're making money. It's very hard to grow your confidence when you're losing. In fact, when you're losing money, the worst thing about losing money, besides the money that you lose when you take trades and lose, is that your confidence goes straight down. Like your confidence, like as if you were jumped right out of the building out of my window, you'd, be, you'd hit the pavement. That's what happens to people's confidence when they lose. No, the tuition is one time for my class, you learn it. If you want to join the trading room, there's a monthly fee or an annual fee or the newsletter is an annual fee. But you learn the system in one class. Uh, getting back to what I was saying here. Alan's the only one asking questions. <laughs> uh, okay, to make in this business as a day trader, you cannot lose a lot. It sounds like common sense, but the fact is you can't can't because eventually you're gonna run out of money if you keep losing so you have to win more than you lose you gotta win more than you lose the amount that you win and then the number of times the number of times is really really important what do i mean a high win ratio that's the only way to consistently make profits and again this helps your confidence too so you have to win more times than you lose and that means you have to be right a lot you have to be right a lot all right and again, this is something that people struggle with when they trade and you can't question it, all right? If you know what something will do in a stock before it does it, you can make money and you can make a lot of money. And that's how you, 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 you can replicate it, okay? Like I knew Tesla was gonna have a move that was very bullish before the move happened. And we were in it very, 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 very early this year, okay? So. Again, I tend to, to, to see things early. That's better than seeing it late. So sometimes I'll call a trade, we'll be down in it until it goes, and then it ends up being a huge trade. So I always tell people, don't, don't kill them. You put the stop in if you're in the day trade, or you take the risk for the option, and you just you gotta let that sucker play out. Because sometimes I see things very, very early. That's just me, okay? But it works. <laughs> so again, it's better to be early than to be late. Because sometimes you don't know something when I, as soon as I see it, I want to do it because it could happen like that. Do you know what I'm saying? So you got to get in it. 
Um, anyway, so Golden Gap Rating System is a 26-point checklist. It measures gaps of rating them in the daily chart to find stocks to trade that, number one, have a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, preferably. A big move on the day, again, preferably. Early confirmation of the bias in the move between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern Time, which we got today in Boeing. And precise entries with follow-through and a good risk to reward and, and a good target potential, which obviously Boeing had too. Uh, let me see here. The, someone's asking about the thought process. I'll pull up some charts if we have time here at the end. But as far as my point system, I wouldn't go through that here today. That's the meat and potatoes of the class. We learn in the class, which is 14 hours. Um, but I'll pull up something here if we have time today and just look at something. I'll look at the market. I, I want to look at the market here when we're done today. I'm going to try to get through this. But with this Zoom, I can't flip back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So I want to finish the PowerPoint here today, and then I'll flip and bring up my charts. I think we're going to have time because it's only 1140. Uh, doo -ba -doo -ba -doo. Okay, we were talking about making money trading, being consistent. We talked about that. The rating system looks at 26 points. Talked about that. And again, I'm choosing the direction. I do it all in the pre-market. I never skip it. As long as I've been doing this, I don't skip it. I always sit down every morning and rate what I do. I get up super duper early. I'd say you got to give yourself at least an hour, but as soon as I wake up, as soon as I get out of bed every single morning, the first place I go is my computer to look at the market. And I say, oh, okay, okay, what's going on today? What are we doing today? And that's what I do. And you just get in a routine about it. And again, I'm in New York, I'm in Manhattan, so I'm in the same Eastern time zone as the market. But you can make it work no matter where you live. You can trade from anywhere in the world, okay? But you got to make the time zone work for you because we want to be in stuff in the morning. And the porns tell you, where the money is flowing and it matters because that's how you know whether to take something long or short so what do you need to make trading work number one you need a strategy for me it's gaps take a look here at this bynd this was earnings stop close tier gap down open rally boom you shorted it this was last week on friday yeah it was friday the 28th entering this was 90 10 short 1,200 shares, stop in this wasn't small. 92.10, this was an equity trade. Risk was 26.40, exit 85.28. Again, momentum. Do you see this? Boom, boom. It was almost a $5 move. 1,200 shares, profit 57.84. Beautiful move. Beautiful move to the downside. Market gap down in rally Friday. Remember, BYND was a short fell. We got the move. It was a fast short. And it was a great trade into a Friday. So my strategy told me, what are we going to do today? And I saw the BYND. It had earnings. I rated the gap. The gap rated that it was going to continue lower and fall, fell in the gap. And I said, this is going to keep going. And it did. Boom. And we shorted it. Now, this was another trade that I had called last week. Another Apple, 275s. Again, you can do these as options if you have a cash account and not margin, or you can do them as day trades if you want to just short them. But anyways, cost of the Apple 275s was five bucks. 15 contracts was a $7,500 risk, sold at 16, profit 16.5. Have you, do you have to have the money to do this? Yes. If you do, can you do it? The answer is yes. But if you had one contract, you would have risked $500, and guess what? You would have had still a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful trade. One contract would have cost you $500, and you still would have made over 1000 bucks. Nice trade, okay? 220% return on investment. So you don't have to risk a big amount, but if you can afford to, then you can, because obviously you make more, and over time as you grow your account, then you can risk more. And I also tell people <coughs> to look every quarter. So we're getting into the end of the first quarter. Some people are doing really, really, really well. I said, wait until the second quarter. Wait until the next quarter to increase your risk. Wait until earnings season begins for second quarter. I also called the 280 puts. Again, this was 8, 12 in the morning Thursday. They cost more because this was closer to the strike seven. This was out till Friday, this Friday too. But again, this gap down, Friday morning fell, sold it for 20, 13,000 profit, 186% return investment. This is the number that you want to look at. Because again, one contract was $700, but you still could have sold it for 20. Okay, so you could have made 1300 bucks on one contract. That's a nice trade. And here I called a couple apples. I called the 282.50s. 
Sometimes I do that. Like I'll call a couple and then you could take it, get out, take it, get out, or I'll call it boom, boom, boom. Or if I see it's going to fall into the strike, I'll call them in a row. This costs eight, sold at 24, 16 grand, 200% return investment, nice trade again. Called them all Thursday morning. Then I called this buy 300 puts. This was a really nice trade. Cost was five, sold at 17, 18 grand, 240% return on investment. I think it's okay to risk more on the options or the overnights. That's me personally. I think it's okay to do that because you can get really big moves and stuff overnight. And then also you have the protection, which your only risk is the risk in the trade. 650 was the cost of the Boeing 290s I called. Again, early in the morning, Thursday morning, gap down, fell. Again, the fact that I still could have been in this. I don't even know. I don't even know what these were today. These two nineties, but again, the stock went twenty-two points through this, which it which it just collapsed. I mean, it went farther than it had even last Friday. But again, this was a great trade from Thursday to Friday, two hundred thirty-eight percent return on investment. And I called the Q's two ten. These were all front the Thursday to Friday. Like again, I call. I saw the market was going to fall on Thursday. I called trade, trade, trade. Put 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 short short short. So it's again, it's as many trades as you want to do, is as much risk as you want to put on. Cost of these was five, sold at 1275, 11,250, 150% return investment. I call the diamonds, which is the ETF for the Dow. Again, these weren't cheap, but they rock and rolled. 675, sold at 17. Again, on the gap down that occurred on Friday morning, but you take it in the morning on the Thursday. This was the 27th. And I also called the 295 Boeings. But I, again, Friday was a great exit. But these were nine, sold at 26. Again, it's collapsed. Collapsed almost 30 points through that number there. Tomorrow was the expiration date. Return on investment, 189. The 297.50s I called as well. These were all Thursday Boeings. I called them boom, boom, boom. Cost was 10, sold at 24, 11,200. Return on investment, 140%. Again, this is one within one day, and the 300 strike, one, two. Again, this went 32 points through it, actually, since today. Cost was 11, risk, 7,700, sold at 30. I should look up what these were, what this was today. Profit, 13,300, return on investment, 173%. Again, I like the fast trades, but you can hold some of these if you want to. Now, let me just see if there's any other questions. Um, sometimes it depends if I have too much going on, if I have a TV spot, sometimes I'm in cheddar on the open, sometimes I'm on radio, if I put an order out, but I might have to adjust it anyway. So even if I put an order out that I want to get filled into the open, because you don't get filled until after the open, then I might have to adjust it anyways if I'm on radio or something else. If I'm just running the room regular, I usually estimate where I want it and then move them or I just wait and take them as far as uh, orders go. It depends what's going on with my schedule. How much does the, does the class cost? It's $6,999. Would they have to do the class? They'd have to do the class before they join the live room. However, you don't have to do the class if you want to do options. You can sign up for the options newsletter separately. So that is up to you. You can go to my website, www.thestockswish.com and see the upcoming classes I have going on and the subscription services. Being in the room is a big benefit, though, because of the fact that I tell you what, what's going to happen today, what's going on. So I knew 100% that Bone was going to go to 270 today, and then it broke that. Okay. All right. So anyways, I look at gaps. I've been talking about this. You need a method and structure to enter and exit the picks. Here's what we did today in Boeing. So Boeing closed here last night around 283. Boom. Opened here in the morning around 275 and change. Open, fell, dropped. We shorted this aggressively, aggressively, and it worked. And then it collapsed. So this is the move that you want to get. And we got it. Okay, you could have got out of it here. 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 You can still be in it. So the reality is that this, 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 see, like, you would never have gotten, like, we got the, we almost shorted the high of the day in this. Like, we couldn't have gotten a better entry in this. So, I mean, it just collapsed. I knew this was going to go. So we did it, and you put the stop. I'll go over this later in some kind of email. I didn't have time to put the numbers in, but this was a beautiful call. We did this at 931, sold off. So again, selling, who's in control? Remember, we're talking about power money, institutional money, who's in control? I saw 
here in the pre-market that the bears were in control. So what did the bears do? They go, boink, and it sold off. The bulls aren't in control here. The bears were in control here. That's why this sold off, okay? Now, also you need to have goals. Your goals should be per day, per week. Some days you want to have a trade like we talked about. Some days you'll have three trades, okay? Some days you have a really big day. Some days you have a small day. So I think it's good to look at goals per week and per month, and that's how you get to the annual goals. But it's the reliability in the system, sticking with it, staying on top of it, and obviously money management. And again, some of these things to me are just so 101 trading, 101 common sense, 101, but I think people do need to be reminded about their risk. I use stops. They're limit order stops. If BA had reversed today, we would have gotten stopped out. I can tell you that I would have retaken it if we had gotten stopped out. We didn't, but I would have went right back into that puppy. I believed in it. I believed in it full force. And I'm very much like this with my trading. I'm very deliberate. Again, I don't waver. I'm very black and white about it. This is a long. This is a short. Either works or it doesn't. That helps me, okay? It helps me make more money. And it, it's something that you can learn from me as well. So... You've got to get the proper education to trade. And I would seriously think about that. When you're choosing what to do, you have to say, okay, does this make sense? What this person is saying? Because if it doesn't make any sense to you, then why, why do you think it's going to work, I guess? Um, I use very few indicators, just a couple of things. A lot of people use all kinds of indicators, and I think, it, I, I think it's a mess because a lot of people don't know what they mean, and a lot of them don't work. And if just using indicators worked, like buying something, like I said, on the 200 pre moving average, then no one would ever lose in the market. And consequently, then no one would ever make a lot of money. So the people that make a lot of money have a structure, have a system. It gives them an edge to profit, and they also have goals. Now, while you may not have liked my answer, Alan, as far as taking a $5,000 account and making 20 grand in a month, you may have not liked that answer, but it was an honest answer. It doesn't mean that you can't make 20 grand a month eventually, but you've got to grow that account first and you've got to learn what to do and sit down and write a business plan. How are you going to get there? How many months is it going to take you to get there? It's not going to take you that long if you do the right things. If you do the wrong things, it's, it, you'll never get there, quite frankly. So I teach a class, it's called the Golden Gap Course. It teaches one solid strategy to trade gaps effectively by reading the side of power and charts. I teach support and resistance, which a lot of people misread as well. I teach it in gaps. I teach a more proficient, advanced way to read charts and technical analysis. It's technical analysis in gaps. And the course teaches how to get conviction in your trading in the market as a source of wealth by trading with the side of power for consistent profit. You can get wealthy in the market if you know what to do. Many people fail because they don't know what to do. And they have limited funds, which they uh, use in excess to try to make jumps and leaps and bounds uh, without thinking about what they're doing or having a good strategy, all right? Just, li just like I was telling you about uh, my friend. He, he thinks he's going to make a million dollars in this stock that's in a downtrend. He happens to be up in it right now, but he's going to lose all the profit if he doesn't get out of it soon because there's a higher probability that that stock is going to continue lower than it is and it's going to continue higher because the trend in itself is to the downside, okay? So trading is about looking at probabilities. It's, that's why I use the rating system. It's high probability or low probability, okay? Anyways, you have to start somewhere. You make... Thousand dollars a month before you make two, you make three thousand dollars a month before you make six. That's how you grow your account. That's how you get somewhere, and you've got to focus on quality. So put a plan of action in place. If you want to do my class, the class, the bullish class is next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, March 9th, 10th, and 11th. The bearish class is March 21st and 22nd. That's the classes for March for this month. Okay, and. I don't have the class dates set yet for April because April with the holiday with Easter, I have to look at the calendar. I only do the bullish class though once a year. So it will just be next week during the week for the bullish class. The bearish class I do each month. It teaches a 26 point rating system to trade the stock each day and how to read institutional positioning in stocks. And you're really going to learn a lot about gaps and you're probably going to unlearn some of the things that you that you think you know but aren't working when you come and learn what I know and how I look at things. And it's really about working smarter, not harder. 2020 has started off extremely well. I'm very focused. It's been an active year. I probably 
between the day trading room and the options newsletter, I don't I don't even know how many trades of call are done this year. It is I have been more active this year in 2020 than ever. I I I guess I'm very motivated to make money this year. <laughs> so I guess that's I guess that's probably why. <laughs> And uh, I think you have to be one of these people that, you know, that is in, in, in the crowd and then looking out and saying, you know what, I'm going for it. I want to make this work. I'm going to do it. So I'm offering a special. It's through tomorrow, Friday, March 6th. If you sign up for the bearish class or the bullish class by tomorrow, then you get the newsletter and the trading room free through May 31st, Memorial Day weekend. So that's a good offer when you normally pay for both. If you're interested or want more information or even want a trial for tomorrow for one day in the room, email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. Uh, my class is a two-day course. It's 14 hours. The bullish class is during the week, so it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, spread over three days. And the bearish class is two days. Okay, so these are the dates. Again, email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com if you want to sign up. There's no prerequisites for the options newsletter. It's an annual subscription. I have no trials for that letter and there is no monthly subscription, okay? It's a one year letter. For the, for the trading room though, that you have to do one of these classes in order to join. Um, option trading, here, let's just pull up the, let me just get on here. Oh, this Boeing looks really good, look at this. And so does the market. Oh my gosh, look at the market. I'm gonna be right in the market. Oh my gosh, this is so good. <gasps> the market's lower, people. Oh my lanta. And we rallied over the high since I was talking and we're still, we're gonna fall. Here, hold on, how do I put this up? I think I screwed this up here now. I have to press stop, then I have to press it again. 